Do you feel like is the church doing enough to fight racism? First of all, to the harm the church has done, right? Only recently the Pope apologized for residential schools, right? Um, in Canada, that's the Canadian context. It took a long time for the Dutch Reformed Church in South Africa to come to grips with this apartheid um, heritage, right? There's a lot of harm that the church has done, the global church, right? Um, but then also you and I, we are the church too, right? And so I believe as each one of us, as I do the work, as as I sit with my friends and I, you know, we gather people in the circle of recovering racism, we're like, my hope is that we can do less harm, right? So as each person takes her responsibility or their responsibility to see where does my story intersect with racism? Mm -hmm. Maybe I haven't done anything specific that was racist, but how does my story, my family story, the story of my people, my cultural story, how does that intersect with racism? How did my people arrive on this continent, right? Wow. Um, there's beautiful work done in New Zealand as well, where people are literally tracing their, their, their stories and learning from the Maori people about how to talk about that. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning in, I wanna learn more. Um, and so I think there's definitely on an, I think we have to look at the individual story and then we have to look at our collective story, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes the harm has been done on an individual basis and then we absolutely have to repair and repent and, mm -hmm. and, and do the work and ask, how might I restore you, right? Mm -hmm. But I think if we ask that question of each other, even if the global church or the church or the denomination we're a part of asks, who have we harmed? Mm -hmm. Who is my other? Who is the person I'd rather not have sit in the pews with me, right? Or who is missing from the pews with me and why? And then the question, how am I Irish story? If I have harmed you, if I've done something against you, if I've committed um, a sin against you or the sin of omission, <laughs> right, um, towards you, is there something I can restore? And, you know, I think we're also talking about money, right? And so that's a hard one for people. In South Africa, you know, I literally benefited financially mm -hmm. from being white and growing up in apartheid, right? Wow. So a friend challenged me and said, okay, you need to calculate. You can actually calculate just for my education how much I've more, how much more I've benefited. Right. And so 90% of this proceeds is going back 30% to South Africa, 30% to Canada and 30% to the US, because these are all places where I find my way and my being in, in the world. Right. And I'm so grateful for the voices of liberation out of these places. And so we are giving back. Right. Because I couldn't be a white woman who would be benefited from some, from apartheid and again <laughs> benefit from writing a book about apartheid, right? It's just, and so there's that coming, that humble sitting with God too, and just saying, what is my place in the story? What is required of me? If we truly take Micah 6, 8 seriously, right? And for, and for people of privilege, the requirement for us to say is to ask, what does the Lord require of me? Mm -hmm. And it is to seek justice, mm -hmm. to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Wow. Those who have been oppressed, they have permission to cry out, to lament, to be angry, to, to, to yeah, to, we see that in the Psalms. But the people of privilege, our responsibility is to ask, what does the Lord require of and so, you know, as we, as we learn to do that, as we kind of find our way towards this other, this other alternative, this new world, this new king, kingdom coming, right? Like, you know, some, some beautiful things can, can, can happen. I'm, you know, even just relationally, right? Mm 